to welcome you to this worship service. All people are welcome here. We are in the Easter season, celebrating the presence of the risen Christ. So we will now light the Christ candle. Da, 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 da. Light, yay. It is also our all ages service, designed to be kid friendly and participatory. You can start by joining in and singing our first hymn, He Lives.
Make a peace sign on your screen. Peace. Today's prayer is based on this Sunday's Psalm, number 116. Let us pray together. Holy One, we turn to you in times of trouble, when we are afraid, when we are confused, when we don't know what to do. We love you, O God, because you have heard the voice of our supplications, because you have inclined your ear to us whenever we called upon you. Today, we call upon you with our prayer concerns. I will read aloud the prayers emailed to me, and I invite you all to type your prayers of concern into the comments now. We pray for those fighting COVID-19, including Edley's brother, Melvin Jones, his daughter, and her son, who are hospitalized, as well as residents of 178 Sycamore Street. We pray for all of those who are grieving alone and for all of those who are ill with things other than COVID-19 and who are handling the symptoms at home rather than going to a health professional during this time. We pray for Steve Shankel's family, particularly his mother, Barbara, who's recuperating in Florida. We pray for the family of Taylor's friend, Alana, who lost her teenage daughter to gun violence in Dorchester this week, and for the family of Taylor's coworker, Lisa, who died of COVID-19. We pray for all of those who are negatively impacted by the restrictions on immigration. We pray for all of those who are hungry and for our food pantry and its ministry. We pray for the essential workers who are going to work each day so that we can have the things that we need. We pray for the 27 million Americans who are unemployed and for the 50% of private sector workers in France who are unemployed. And we pray for all of those who do not have access to hand washing, which is crucial to preventing the spread of COVID-19, especially in sub-Saharan Africa and Central and South Asia. Lead us into new ways of being, of helping, and of loving one another, that we may bring your peace and justice to the world around us. Because you have been faithful to us, O oh God, since the beginning of time, bringing us out of times of despair and into hope, out of death and into new life, even now, in this time of pandemic, we trust in you. We see your saving hand at work, not through sudden magic snap of your fingers, but in so many ways, small and large, each day, and we share our prayers of joy now by typing them into the comments as I pray these joys aloud. I am praying aloud for all the places we see God showing up right now. In the thousands of scientists and researchers and doctors and health professionals across the world who are searching for a vaccine, for a cure. In Eric Kim, an Oregon high school student, who's making clear face masks so that the hearing impaired can still communicate while they're being protected. We pray for all those who are part of the restaurants and bakeries and food trucks who are delivering free meals to healthcare professionals, essential workers, and people living in senior living facilities. We pray for all those places like the people showing up on the internet ready and willing to give to people that they don't even know who are in need. You, O oh God, are the one who gives us life and gives it abundantly. Even now, we trust in you. We will walk in the presence of God in the land of the living. For you, O oh God, have entrusted us with your world and with one another, your beloved children, how shall we repay God for all the good things done for us? We will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of God. We will fulfill our vows to God 
in the presence of all people. And even now, we trust. Amen. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad to be with you this morning through the computer. Today, I'm going to tell you a Bible story. You can find it in your Bibles in the Gospel of Luke in the 24th chapter, verses 13 through 35. But I'm going to tell it um, in a briefer way with uh, pictures. The title of this story is On the Road to Emmaus. Jesus had many friends, and as you may know, um, there were other people than just the 12 disciples who followed after him. There were women and men who lived in different places, who listened to his teachings, who supported him, who uh, loved him, and followed after him. One of those was the name, by the name of Cleopas, and I don't think you've probably heard of that name. So this story is about Cleopas and uh, one of the other friends of Jesus. The story starts this way. Three days after Jesus died, Cleopas and another friend, we're not told what his name was, they left Jerusalem to go back to Emmaus, their hometown. In those days, people had to walk from place to place. The two walked slowly because they were thinking about all that had happened that weekend. They were still in shock, and they felt very sad that Jesus had died. It just wasn't right. They wondered, why did Jesus have to die? And they couldn't imagine going back to their normal lives. After a little while, a stranger came up from behind them and started to walk alongside them on the road. The stranger was really Jesus, but they didn't know that it was him. The stranger asked them, What were you talking about back there? The two were surprised that this person didn't seem to know what had occurred in Jerusalem. Are you the only one in town who doesn't know what happened to Jesus? Cleopas filled him in on the facts. Jesus was a great teacher. We also hoped that he was the one that God had promised would come and save us. But instead, he died on a cross. The friend of Cleopas continued their story. Yeah, another friend of ours named Joseph was allowed to take Jesus' body down and put it in his tomb. Cleopas picked up the story from there. Then incredibly, this morning, Mary and some of our other companions went to the tomb, but Jesus' body was gone. They told us that there was an angel there instead and that the angel said, Jesus is alive. But that's when their new companion spoke up. You know, this news is not so strange. How many times do you have to hear that God loves you? God sent Jesus to be with you, to be with all of us, and to save the world. When he died, God made him alive again. That's not so unusual for God. By now, the three of them were almost to Emmaus. As the sun was going down, Cleopas really wanted to keep going with the conversation, and so he invited the stranger to stay for dinner. During their meal, the stranger picked up the loaf of bread. He broke it, blessed it, and gave it to Cleopas and his friend, each of them a piece. 
When he did this, it reminded them of what Jesus had done in the upper room at their last supper. All of a sudden, their eyes were opened, and they recognized who the stranger was. It was Jesus, alive with them there. As soon as they realized this, he disappeared. They were so amazed and happy that they jumped up from the table, they went outside of their house, and they ran all the way back to Jerusalem to tell Jesus' disciples and the rest of his followers the good news that Jesus was really alive and to tell them that they had seen him when he broke the bread at supper. The end. Or is it really the beginning? Wow. I hope you liked this story. And we're going to have a little bit of time to talk about it uh, further with each other. I'm glad you listened so well. And now, um, kids and adults, in order to have um, more conversation about it, I want to call your attention to the side of your computer screen. And there you'll find a white uh, rectangle, and it'll have um, a place where you can type in your comments. So I'm going to pose a couple of questions, and then uh, you can type in your answers. There'll be time for you to do that, and if you need help, you can ask someone who's there with you, or you can do it yourself. And one of the neat things about the computer is that while you're typing in, other people will be typing in making comments, responding to the question, and I will too. So it'll be like we are there together, uh, normally talking. So let's start. Um, the first question uh, that I want to ask you is, uh, Cleopas and his friend, we might remember, were not able to recognize Jesus at first. Uh, why do you think that was? What might be some of the reasons for that? Take a few minutes to think about it uh, and write down your response. So the first question again was, um, why was it that they weren't able to recognize Jesus at first? And there's not just one answer to this. Um, I see that you've put down some interesting thoughts about it. Uh, one of the reasons for that may be that Jesus didn't look the same or didn't sound the same as they remember. I'm thinking about uh, these days when we walk around um, with... Uh, face coverings on in order not to um, spread the virus. And sometimes we can uh, be walk by somebody and then not recognize them because they don't look the same to us as they used to. Uh, there might be other reasons for this. Um, the story told us that the two who were going to Emmaus were very sad and maybe they didn't recognize him because they were crying. And they just couldn't see him through their tears. Um, then it also occurs to me that um, maybe they didn't see him because um, sometimes when we look at someone who is either uh, sick or uh, lonely or hungry or a stranger that we don't know, 
um, we don't realize that this too is someone like Jesus and that it could be him um, coming alongside of us. There's a second question now, and that is um, when in the story did Cleopas and his friend see Jesus for who he was? When did they recognize him as being alive? And then um, along with that is a question, how can you and I see Jesus um, and recognize him as being alive among us? So take uh, another little bit of time to think about it and type in your answers. So let's remember, the second question was, when did Cleopas and his friend recognize who Jesus was? And then the second one is, how can we recognize him? So I see that you've written down here some really interesting answers to that question. If you wrote into the comment box that in the story it was when they were at the table eating together, when Jesus took the bread and he blessed and broke it, that's the right answer. That's when their eyes were opened and they saw him as who he was. It's like when um, at communion time, when we say the same kind of words and we demonstrate what happened at the table, uh, that he took the bread, he blessed it and broke it and he gave it to them. Well. That's as if we are reenacting the same thing, and we believe that at communion, Jesus is alive there, present with us at the table. So there can be other times when Jesus is present to us, that communion is one of them, but there can be other times. Remember when I was talking about how sometimes people who are um, sick or lonely or um, strangers or hungry, well, if we are giving them food, if we are visiting them, if we are listening to them, then and welcoming them as a stranger, then we are doing that to Jesus, and that's a way of him being here. Um, also, by being in worship together, when we sing and pray and uh, when we read the scripture together, and when we dialogue with each other, these are all times that Jesus is with us especially. Even when we're giving our offerings so that we can help others, Jesus is right there and alive among us. We just have to open our eyes. Open our eyes. Thank you very much for participating in this story time with me. I'm glad that we've spent this time together. And now we're going to go into a prayer hymn. We're going to sing, asking God to help us open our eyes. Would you sing along with me?
glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine. Let's receive the blessing of God. God bless you and keep you and give you peace. May God grant through the Holy Spirit that you have open eyes, open ears, open hearts, and open hands. As you go into the world, may you be a blessing of love to others. Amen. Thank you.